Hi, my name is Alan Smithson, the CEO of Metaverse, the universal XR creation platform. You can take out your phone now, point your phone's camera at this QR code, and you can try the examples that I'm gonna show you throughout this presentation. So I'll give you a few seconds to get your phone out, point your phone's camera at this QR code. It will take you to our website, metaverse.com forward slash showcase, where you can try all of the examples I'm about to show you live on your phone. All right, here we go. My name again is Alan Smithson, and my personal mission is to inspire and educate leaders to think and act in a socially, economically, and environmentally sustainable way. I post a lot on LinkedIn about XR and how spatial computing can deliver next level education for the world. So please follow me on LinkedIn and add me as you see fit. We're entering into a world where we're seeing a new communications. We're seeing the future of communications in 3D, virtual, augmented, and mixed reality, collectively known as XR. And these technologies have the ability to add $1.5 trillion to the global economy by 2030, according to a study by PwC. Metaverse is a family of companies that has created a number of resources to help unlock the true power of spatial computing for everyone. XR for Business is our podcast and news outlet for business applications. XR for Learning, learning applications. XR Collaboration is a global guide on how to use XR Collaboration platforms for your business or organization with a full directory on all of the organizations listed in the world. XR Ignite is our community hub where we bring startups, studios, developers, and researchers together to have communications around how do we bring this spatial computing to the world. And of course, our Metaverse Universal 3D Creation Platform at metaverse.com. So our Metaverse engine, we wanted to make something that was easy to learn so that anybody could start building these experiences. It needed to be easy to create and then the last part needed to be easy to share. So that's what we built and I'll explain a little bit more. Our vision is to become the PowerPoint for XR. If you look at PowerPoint, there's about 35 million PowerPoints made daily. It's easy to learn, it's easy to create, and it's easy to share. This is our vision. Where do we work? Right now, currently, there's about 7.5 billion 3D-enabled devices when you can factor in computers, tablets, and smartphones. If you look at where this is going, we're gonna to go to phone to face over the next three to five years, but right now, the devices on the left represent about 500 times more than the glasses. So over the next five years, we're gonna have this renaissance where we go phone to face, and this is gonna be super exciting, and our platform works on all these devices right out of the box. So let's look at the comparison, the 3D game engines where all the 3D content is made. Most of the content right now is made on Unity or Unreal Engine, and these are fantastic softwares. They're built, almost all of the apps that you see on your phone, all of the games you play, these are built on that but they're not web enabled. And they also require coding and they use languages like C Sharp and C++, which there are a limited number of coders that understand these. We represent a, kind of a new paradigm for this in that we wanna be a no code, low code environment where anybody can build. And if people do wanna go into the pro features, they can use JavaScript. And this opens our world up to 13 million JavaScript coders around the world. The average learning curve for Metaverse is a lot shorter than the other engines. It's web enabled, so anybody can access it with no uh, special hardware, no special computers, just any computer that is connected to the internet. We are able to push an enormous amount of polygons, which gives that photorealistic look all on the web. And we offer something that nobody else offers, on-premises hosting. Some of our clients really need to have um, very high security. And so we're able to build the entire tech stack on their, on their hosting. This is where it shines. Building with Metaverse is three times faster and two times simpler than building with Unity. This is our mantra. So I'm gonna stop talking here. Again, you can try all of these experiences on your phone and your device, and I'm gonna open my next tab. And I'm gonna show you rather than talk about it here. So how can you use some of these experiences? Here's a room configurator. And you can see, okay, maybe I want it for a meeting room. Maybe I want it for a ballroom. I can change the colors. But really what it gets really interesting is when you start to look at it from inside and you start to say, oh, what does it look like from anywhere in the room? And you can go anywhere in this room 
And maybe you want to say, hey, what does it look like if I'm the speaker in the room and I'm looking out at everybody and I can kind of back up, I can say, what does it look like to stand at the podium, look out to the crowd? What about as a meeting room? How about different colors? You can start to really change everything in the room. As a planner of uh, events, this would be an amazing tool. Okay, so that's just one example. What about retail and e-com? Here's a sofa that we built and you can actually start to see this in all sorts of different configurations. So there's a small one to, you know what? Let's do this one here. And then we can start to make our differences, add the two chaise loungers. I'm gonna add some pillows and you can see it from any, any point and you can start to look at it and see it. And then of course there's augmented reality, which I'm on my computer, so I can't show that. But the AR button here will allow you to see this couch in real size in your space. And the little details are really what gets you. Look at how clear that is. Whoops, went inside the couch. Look at that. Incredible, incredible clarity on this experience. How about a Nike shoe for a, a configurator on the on web? So you can start to do things like, oh, I want to change, yeah, you know, let's change the logo. Uh, I'm going to change the quarters. There we go. Ooh, that's funky. There we go. All right. You can start to create your own shoe. And really design this. Now, this also can be connected to business intelligence tools. So every click that a customer makes can be recorded as, uh, as a, a piece of information that you know now, and you can start to sell differently to your customers. What about doing it for product dis displays this product in photorealistic you can start to draw you know bring attention to all the different features of the product this reduces uh reduces returns increases conversion rates it's really really uh visceral because people are interacting with the products here's a surfboard you can start to look at the different features of the surfboard you can change the color of it you can personalize it to what you want you can Give people really in-depth looks at your products. This one's really neat. You can actually start to see the reflections in the glass. And the interesting thing about these glasses is they're not just normal glasses. You can start to see inside. It almost gives you superpowers. So I can see right inside this now. So these glasses are not just glasses. They're speakers. You can start to see all the things inside. Really, really great. How about cars? Here's a Mercedes-Benz. You can start to say, hey, awesome. I love this car. I want to change the rims. Oh, yeah, blackout rims. And I'm going to change the color. Uh, let's go with blue. I'm going to open the doors. And when you start to realize the graphics in this is incredible, you can zoom right, right into the dashboard and start to get a really great sense of what the car looks like from all angles. And this is all running on the web with real time. You can see the reflections right down here. And you can see even the wood trim is there. I'll zoom right out so you can get a good look at the car. You can even start to, you know, set it spinning. You can put a road below it. Full animations. How about an Audi? There's another one, real-time reflections. You can see that same building reflecting off the paint job. You can spin right around. You can create animations. Zoom right into points of interest. You can start to see the dashboard. Zoom right into the steering wheel. Get a feel for exactly what it looks like no loss of clarity you can create hot spots to drive people's attention you could even do things like you know do up the windows how about a washroom virtual showrooms are going to be a thing because people don't want to go out and see different you know products in showrooms anymore so you can bring the showroom to them here's a total virtual showroom where we can take the sinks and we can say hey look and you can See the whole thing in 3D. You can look at it from any angle and you can say, oh, I like this sink. I like it in red, maybe. I'll make a bathtub. Ooh, look at this. Um, I like this, this soaker tub here. I definitely like it in red. And then let's make a toilet to match, shall we? We'll do the bidet as well. Because, you know, COVID times and all, we'll have a bidet. And of course, we'll make it in red. And now when we look, we've got our dream bathroom all ready to go and you can start to take a photo of it. You can stage it however you like, and you can start to take images of it and share it with your friends. What about collaboration on products? Being able to take an engine, for example, and start to collaborate on it. All of the, everything you see here can be collaborative as well. 
You can start to see inside of things, see how things work. You can zoom right in with no loss of clarity. Really, really beautiful. And here's an education piece. No, that's not the moon. It's actually Pluto. And we have the whole solar system flying by us here. So you can take the solar system and you can start to look at it from a different angle. See how fast the planets spin. You can zoom in to anything. You can hit stop. You could inspect a planet. You could look at it from any angle and really start to see things from a different angle. You can also start to look at different planets in more detail. For teachers and educators, building these experiences is going to be a lot of fun. You can go in, you can see the comparison between Mars and Earth. You can see their, their rotational positions. It's all spatial. And that is really great. But let me show you how easy it is to make these. So here's our editor. You can load a project. So there's all the projects in there. You can create a project. We have some samples in here as well that you can start from. And then you can import an entire project. So you can download the entire project file, share it with your colleagues. Let's create it. We'll start from scratch. I'll show you how easy it is to make one of these products. Projects, rather. So everything you're seeing is real time. Everything you saw is real time running on my web browser while I'm recording this video as well. Okay. So here's our cube. I'm actually going to hide the cube because we don't need it right now. But I'm going to do a full import and I'm going to show you exactly every button on here and how this system works. Let me zoom out quick just so to show you I've added six lights. They're pre-added in there, but you can move them however you want. Um, but I'll leave them for now. You can turn them on and off as well. I'm going to import. I'm going to go desktop, yellow robot. Oops. There we go. And it'll ask you where do you want to import it. You can turn them on and off as you need, but you can add a new folder. We're going to call it robot. Import the files. And it, what it's doing is it's importing all the files now. And it's converting them to our, our format. And so now you can use them all on the web. So what it does up in here is your inspector for the scene. So down here is our inspector for our assets. We just brought these assets in. So let's start to use them. I'm going to bring the robot arm in and you'll notice it's there. And if I click it, I can start to do things like on this right hand side panel. This is our mesh inspector. I can start to do things like move it. I can rotate it. I can scale it. All right, I zoom out, there's the scale. I'll just scale it back. I can scale it, I can zoom in, but it still doesn't look like a robot. So what I want to do is I want to add colors to it. So I'm going to add maybe, I want to change it to red. Oh, why is it only doing the one? So let's check this out. So up in the mesh inspector, I can click this button. It shows me all the meshes that this particular model is built of. I can click one and I can change it. Or I can go in there and I can go to materials. I can click all the materials and I can change them all at once. Okay, but I don't want it red. What I want it to do is look like a robot. So I'm going to drag my albedo, which is a, a texture format, drop it on. Now it's got the texture, but it still doesn't look very real. It's kind of dull looking and, you know, just not very great. So I'm going to add my normals, which is like adding the texture to it. You see, it's starting to look a little bit more real. I'm going to add the roughness. Whoa, check it out. Now it looks gold. I've got a gold robot. And then I'm going to add my metalness. And that gives me, there you go. Now it looks like a regular robot. There you go. So now I've been able to change these meshes. I'm going to show you one more thing in here. Button here, you can actually start to animate this. So I click that. I can grab an animation. Ooh, I don't know why it's upside down. Oh, let's try that one. There we go. There we go. There's an animation that's pre-programmed. And you can do this whenever you make wherever you make your 3d file so if you can make it in maya you can make it in cinema 4d you can make it in blender these are all uh, softwares that you make the 3d objects in now i forgot to show you just the, the widget here that we call it the gizmo where you can grab and move anything just by simply grabbing an arrow you can also hold shift and make it bigger and scale it by doing that okay so there you go the last button over here the second last button rather is the eye 
That gives you information about this object. It's 1.74 megs, it's 34,000 polygons. You have a bunch of information. And down here, you have an ID tag. And that ID tag is for every single mesh on here has an ID tag. Everything that goes in your scene from a light to an object to a camera all has that. The last one is this code window here. And I'll show you that. This is our visual code snippets. And I'll show you that in a second. So what we've been able to do now is we've been able to add a robot, add textures, but now I wanna change the background slightly. And if you notice, I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna turn off the lights. And if you notice the robot still, still has light. So what's happening is in this world expector here. Oh, let me just show you one more thing in the top left here. Save, load project, export, and log out. So up in here, you can do all that. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna change the name up here. I'm gonna call it robot one. Hit save. It's all auto-saved as well in, in the uh, editor. You can click this world button right here. It opens again, the inspector. And now what it's gonna do is show me the skybox. And if I turn the skybox on, you can see that the skybox is reflecting. That's what's reflecting off of this here. If you notice, you can actually see it there. So I can actually delete it. And now there's no light in the scene at all. So I can turn my lights back on and you can see the lights turn on, lights off. I can add a light and I can then change these lights parameters, but I'll just turn that off for now. Delete, because we already have a bunch of lights. I can go in there. I can start to change the lights parameters as I need as well, okay? But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the background to red or whatever color you want. So I'm gonna leave it as black, but I'm gonna change the skybox because we downloaded a really cool one. Check this out. I can put any HDR, JPEG, uh, PNG, and the files just drop in. Now I have a beautiful skybox that's reflecting off this. But of course, it doesn't make sense to put a skybox of an ocean with this. I just want the nice colors. So I turn that off and now it's giving me a nice bright skybox for my object. See the blue? But with the lights, it looks really nice. So we'll leave that on there. And now what you've got is you've got an object in 3D space, but we wanna do something with it. I wanna be able to change its color or change its parameters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make what's called a configuration. So up in here, we have the add 3D object. You can add FBXs and OBJs. Soon we'll have support for GLTF and, uh, F, uh, GLTF and USDZ. You can add a light to the scene. You can add a camera to the scene. You can add a HUD or heads up display or kind of front facing button. I'll show you that in a second. You can add a configuration. And then you can also add an object group. And this is really cool. The object group allows you to take things like the lights, drop them into an object group. And now when I have the object group selected, I can start to move entire groups of things like the lights all as one group. Okay. So that's object groups. We don't need that. I'm going to take the lights out of there just for this project. Ah, we leave them in, doesn't matter. So got my, I've got my robot arm here and I want to change it somehow. So I'm going to make a configuration, add configuration. I'm going to click it, go enter config mode. And you can do configurations for anything. It could be color, it could be triggering a, a, a movement. It could be triggering size. So I'm going to grab this object and we're going to change this one to red. We're gonna change this one to blue. I have to delete that. And I'm gonna change this one to green, just to make it a little bit different. Now I'm also going to open the thing up. I'm gonna actually scale this to two, two, and two. So I'm gonna double the size and check this out. Exit config mode. Okay, so now I've got a configuration. I can turn that configuration on and off. So I'm gonna leave it off for now. I'm going to add a HUD button. I click the HUD button. I right click, add a square, and now I've got a button. I can click that button. Again, I have all this information here. I could add, for example, if I wanted to add the skybox texture to it, I could add that. If I wanted to do the C, I could do that. And now I've got a picture of the C there. And I can also move it. I'm just going to move it out of the way so it's in the far corner. So I am actually going to get rid of the background because that doesn't make sense. I'm going to make it red just so we know it's a red button. Now I want to make that button do something. So I click the button, I click its code and this is where the code comes in. And because we have a fully JavaScript enabled backend here, check this out. I can add a folder here, obviously in my assets. And when I click on any one of these folders, it starts to show me what's available inside that folder in my assets down below here. 
So when I click the folder here, I have an inspector that shows me all of these things. I also have a con console that keeps track of when I start to, and I'll show you that in a second. But the assets, as soon as you click these textures and you click into something, it shows you that information, okay? So here we go. We're now going to make this button do something very special, turn on and off this configuration. So we go here to JS, add JavaScript or new JavaScript. We have world object and button controllers. You click the button controller and it gives you this piece of code. You can right click this piece of code, edit, and now it opens a viewer just up here and you can get in and edit JavaScript. It's vanilla JavaScript, so if you know JavaScript, you can get right in here and code. I personally don't know JavaScript, so I'm gonna close that. What I can do though, is I can drag and drop this on to my code, this code snippet here, and drop it there. And now it opens up a button type and configurations. I want it to toggle or not. I'm gonna leave it on toggle. And I'm gonna create a configuration by simply dragging and dropping the configuration there. Now it's done. Now, if I hit preview here, which is my preview scene, and this is WYSIWYG, so this is what the, you're gonna see as soon as it publishes. So I hit the red button and it doubles in size, like we said it would, okay? So that's kind of cool, but I also wanna make this whole thing a button. So I'm gonna grab the model, I'm gonna grab the object, I wanna make the object a button, so I'm gonna grab the object, I'm gonna to go to its code tab, drag the same button controller over, drag the same configuration over, and let's check it out. Okay, so now I can turn it on here or here. So now we've turned both into a button. How great is that? So the button's a button, and now the object's a button, and any object can be a button, uh, but it's not by, by mesh, it's by object. Okay, now the last secret sauce of this and what makes this system so awesome is that there's no compiling, everything is real time, and you can push this publish button and create your first release. And as soon as you hit the publish button, it publishes out. So if you wanna take your phone right now, point it at this QR code, you'll be able to see real time the experience that we just made. And just to show you that it works here, it also spits out Android code, iOS code, so you can embed this into existing applications and you can update those existing applications without having to push updates through the App Store. It's also available to embed on your website using HTML code or iframe. And of course, VR and AR is coming soon. That'll be in a, a push in Q4 this year for us. So let me just click that link and we'll see the robot in action. There's a robot and there it is, the color changing robot. So there you've learned how to make your first experience on the metaverse engine. And let's just recap here. You've got the solar system here. You've, these are all built on our system. So you can start to see the power of this and how easy it is to build these things. You can get the engine working, the washroom, the Audi, the Mercedes, the Bose frames, the surfboard, the drill. All of these were made on our engine, the Nike shoe, the sofa, and there we go. I wanna say thank you very much to all of you for watching. Um, you can again scan this here, and if you wanna sign up for your free account today, you can go to engine.metaverse.com, engine.metaverse.com. You can scan this with your phone. You can try all the different showcases. You can learn all about our system, and I'm really, really grateful to the CTS team for having us on here. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing what you build on the Metaverse Engine.